So guys, I'm really excited about today's video because I went out and bought myself the Elgato Camlink 4K. If you're following my channel, then you might know that for quite some time I've been trying to hook up this old, well, not that old, a few years old Sony camcorder. It is the HDR PJ330E, if I'm not mistaken. Try to hook that up to become a webcam. I've tried a lot of things, nothing worked. So here I am buying the Elgato Camlink, hoping uh, that this will finally link this camera to my computer as a webcam. However, this camera is not supported. It's not officially supported in the list of supported devices on the Elgato website. So it's a bit of a risk we're taking here. However, I also have the uh, Fujifilm X-T2, which is supported. So I'm also gonna hook that one up. I wanna check how easy it is to hook a camera up, how easy it is to change the camera potentially and uh, see whether this bad boy here actually works. Uh, so let's start with the unboxing. First of all, actually, let's take a look at the box itself. Um, not much on the front, uh, but I think the interesting part happens around on the back. And you can see here, what I notice is the system requirements are Windows 10, 64-bit is minimum, uh, Mac OS Sierra 10.12, fourth generation quad-core Intel Core i5 CPU minimum, a NVIDIA GTX 960 or better, I have a 980 Ti, so I'm not even that far off from the minimum requirements. And that makes me wonder whether this card will actually like have an impact on my performance when I'm streaming, whether it actually takes out performance because it needs to process the signal coming from the USB 3 port. Um, and then also AMD, the RX 470 or better. So those requirements and an USB 3.0 port, so you can't have like a USB 2.0, it won't work. And I guess those are the specs for like the 4K streaming, which I'm probably not gonna do. I will try it maybe with with the Fujifilm camera. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. That's all you have to, to see. There's a few more specs down here. We get like a cool fancy image up here. Anyway, let's, let's open the box. I've got my trusted knife right here. Let's go, let's see what's in the box. Sealed on both sides. Oops, and make sure I keep the actual box in the camera should see my setup right now, it's quite ridiculous really. I've built a little cardboard box that holds my phone to be the camera. Well, follow me on Twitter, I think I'm gonna post a picture of it there. All right, link is in the description. Okay, we're opening it up, here we go. So here we have this quite nice little box and it contains the cam link itself. It is what you expect it to be, it's, it's really simple um, and quite light, not very heavy. Uh, and it has the obviously the HDMI port on the other end and you even get an additional converter cable let me check out what that is USB oh wow hold on hold on it's a USB extension wow so they're basically assuming in case this Elgato device is too big to go into your tight little USB spot you know maybe with a mouse or other devices next to it you just plug it in here and you have a little extension to go into your USB port. So that's cool. I appreciate that they put that in there and that they think about that. Even it's just a very short cable, but I guess that's all you need. It also comes with, uh, oh, is that a sticker? We're getting a cool Elgato sticker. I've no idea where that's gonna go. And a little minimalistic manual, I wanna say. Not much about it. There's a lot of copy in here. This little book contains more words than the whole Lord of the Rings trilogy and nothing of it will ever be read. So there we go. Let's try to hook this baby up and see what we can do. I'm gonna actually start with this camera, try to configure it to get an HDMI signal to come out of this port. Oh yeah, one little point to mention as well. If you wanna do this, what you're gonna need is a micro HDMI cable that goes to a normal HDMI cable. I'm just grabbing it over here. The way this looks, because I wasn't really aware of this, it nearly looks like one of these old, you know, USB, what is that, USB 2.0 ports? It's embarrassing if it's wrong, but you know what I mean. Uh, it's one of those squads, but it's actually a HDMI micro port, micro HDMI, and on the other end, you have a normal HDMI. So this end will then go into the Elgato stick, and this end here will go into your device, and uh, you should check, obviously, before you do that, whether your device has an HDMI out. Sorry, it's a bit old, this camera, it's a bit dusty and used, but there's the HDMI out. So we're gonna plug it right in here and see if we can get an easy signal on the machine. 
So I also wanted to share with you guys what happens when you actually plug in the stick for the very first time. I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna plug it into the front USB 3 port of my computer and see what happens. So it instantly recognizes it as the Camlink 4K. So here we go. We instantly recognize it as a camera. That's good. Nothing we need to install, so let's move on and try to attach a camera to it. And here we are. It worked like a charm. I did not believe that it would, especially since this camera you're looking through right now is not compatible, you know, based on the list uh, that uh, Gato provides on their website. But it worked perfectly. I didn't even have to have any setup on this camera in the settings. I just plugged in the HDMI out, plugged it in the Elgato, and here we are. It looks good overall. I'm very happy with it. I'm going to quickly show you the setup. You can see here the camera is just sitting on a tripod and uh, the HDMI cable is just going straight into the USB 3 port, very important, and into the Elgato. So it works like a charm. I'm actually really impressed that it works so easy. Let's try out the Fujifilm X-T2. So here we are on the Fujifilm X-T2. It also worked surprisingly easy. I just had to plug it in. There were a few settings I had to look up know how you you manage the camera in the settings you know to uh, get like the signal out through the HDMI port but it worked really flawless and easy and again here we are streaming in 4k I don't know if this is actually recognized 4k and also you can see all the little camera things here plus on top of that if I let me show you if I bring up the camera menu now where is that here Look, you can actually see see the camera menu. So that's pretty cool. Oh, now we're smooth. A second ago, we didn't look smooth, right? What happened there? What's going on? So I'm, I'm fiddling around with it, but the basic functionality is definitely there. And again, I'm bringing up my, my phone. You can see it's just the camera sitting on the tripod on my desk and feeding straight. No, there's nothing to do with anything. Uh, feeding straight into the port. Wow. So... Works great, I'm really happy. Oh, now the, the frame has dropped again. So I need to investigate a little bit and see how I can make this work at 4K, actually record it at 4K, make it smooth because it's supposed to be delivering at least 30 FPS. So we're gonna investigate and see where it takes us. So this did get a bit fiddly in the end. I managed to get it to a point where I'm kind of happy with it, with the X-T2. However, I needed to activate high performance mode. Otherwise the image always got jittery and stuttered after 12 seconds, which was really annoying. But I finally got it to work. However, I had to deactivate face recognition. Because when you activate face and eye recognition, you do get a crisper image because it recognizes your face in the autofocus mode. But you also get a lovely green little square around your face, which you really can't get rid of. I managed to get rid of all the, the other HUD icons, you know, that happen on the screen, but this one can't get rid of it. The only way to get rid of it is to switch off the face recognition, <laughs> which then gives you a worse result. So I guess maybe there's a way around it. If you know it, leave that down in the comment section below. I couldn't figure it out now. So probably the best option is to go with like an area that is just focused, even if it doesn't recognize faces and focuses on them. But I think in terms of the webcam and for my streaming, Still gonna go with hooking up this little camcorder that we've seen in the very beginning, and I'm gonna I'm gonna work with that. Um, I don't think I'm gonna need the high-end quality of the XT2, but it does work fairly flawlessly. I'm sure I could even out all the little hiccups and the issues with the focus right now if I would dive deep into the settings and spend half a day just optimizing it, which I might be doing. And if I do that and I learn something, I'll do another video about it. But that should be it for this video, guys. I hope you learned something. I hope you had fun with it because I was really struggling to find a video that tests different cameras that might not be compatible with the Elgato Camlink. If you have any questions to the Camlink, I'm gonna use it regularly now. I'm gonna probably learn a few things in the process. So leave your questions down in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. Smash a like on this video, that'd be much appreciated. Subscribe if you want to see these, these cameras in action, maybe during one of my live streams. I'd appreciate to meet you there. Thanks for watching guys, see you next time and I'm out, bye.